Hey everybody, Guy from Ajax here. Welcome to the breakdown of the stats, uh, where I play 110 games, I track the cards, I track the summoners, and I track the stats. And I have a breakdown here for you. Web3 strategy games like Splinterlands are the best, and gamers need more of them to choose from. That's why I'm developing my own Web3 basketball strategy game called Geeked Out Basketball. Links are in the description below. Now, let's jump into the stats. Quickly overall, the stats that I'm breaking down, I played 110 games. I ironically went 55 and 55. Many of these games you can see in my past daily five and nine matches. Um, I, some of these I played outside of what was recorded in the daily five and nine as well. I used Splinter tools to go back and capture the data. And then I built an Excel sheet to, uh, to track all of this. And, and I'm gonna be adding more components to the data that I'm tracking. I only play with cards that I own in order to maximize my rewards. I own 213 cards total. I used 128 over the last 110 games, which means 85 of my cards went unused. Splinter usage. Life came in at the top with 24 uses, followed by Death at 22, Water at 19, Fire at 18, Dragon at 15, and Earth at 12. Now, looking at the stats... Uh, summoners. These are arranged by winning percentage. You can see Grandmaster Wraith is at the top with a big 1 and 0 record. Then Obsidian at 9 and 3. Thaddeus came in at 14 and 8 with Quicks at 8 and 7. Jacek is the midpoint. He went 1 and 1 with 50%. Then Sloan, followed by Kelia, Mother Kala, and Tarsa. And what's interesting going into this is I always thought that Water was my strongest splinter. And you can see I lean very heavily into Chaos Legion cards. Uh, but when you look at the data and you look at the stats, I think I need to be using Earth more often. And uh, Thaddeus and, and Death, with a high usage count, has a pretty solid win rate. If you look at the Splinters overall, these are also arranged by winning percentage. Earth came in first at 75% wins, followed by Death and then Dragon. Those were the three splinters where I finished over 500. Water, life, and fire, I finished under 500. Now, let's look into my top 25 cards. And these cards are ranked by number of wins, with the tiebreaker being a higher winning percentage. These were the best performing cards over my last 20, 110 matches. Number 25 was the Fungus Fiend. It came in with four wins and 80% win rate. What's interesting about a lot of the Fiend cards is they tend to be a bit of a proxy for the Splinters. But another thing that they indicate too is I off is my performance in low mana battles. Because oftentimes, obviously the only time I'm going to use a Fiend is when there's a low enough mana that I've stacked uh, my, my lineups and I have an extra space to put a warm body like the Fiend in there. And given that I performed so well with, with uh, Earth overall, it's not a surprise that Fungus Fiend, with only six matches, still got four wins and cracked the top 25. Number 24 is the Stitch Leech. Five wins, 35.7% winning percentage. This one surprised me, I'm not gonna lie. If you listen to my daily five and nines, this is probably my favorite life card. I love the sneak. I love the Vulture. I love the, um, the fact that it acquires uh, health by hitting its opponents. But one thing that I think I've underestimated is that it misses a large number of, it, of its attacks due to its low speed. So I think I might have to look at leveling up this card to make it more powerful, or maybe I don't use it quite as much in life because that's one of my sub-500 performing um, splinters. Number 23, spoiler alert here, this is the only fire card that made my top 25, the 10 Ye Striker. I have such a poor winning percentage with the, uh, with the Fire Splinter, I didn't get many cards that had a large number of wins. But the Striker got in there mostly due to high usage. A 5 and 7 record gave him a 41.7% win rate. Number 22, Another Fiend card makes the list. This time it's the Soul Fiend from the Life Splinter. And he made it more out of quantity than quality. You can see a sub 500 winning percentage of 45.5. But 
it's not surprising the Soul Fiend got a lot of play. Because if you uh, watch my daily five and nines, a lot of my low mana battles are with the Life Splinter, which means the Soul Fiend almost always gets a spot in the uh, in the lineup. Number 21, the Chaos Agent, with five wins and five losses, played right at 50%. Um, not much to say about this card. It's uh, it's a nice little one mana card, or one yeah, one mana card with a couple of uh, interesting abilities to dodge and avoid attacks. Number 20, the Zenith Monk, uh, finished five and four. I'll be honest, it felt like it performed better than it actually did. It always seemed like I usually won with the Zenith Monk, so I was surprised to see his stats come in so close to 500. Number 19, the Venari Bonesmith, also at five and four. I love using this card in death. I love the fact that it, it um, has life leech and then it can also poison its opponents. I only play this one at a level four, so I'm excited to level this one up. Number 18, the Pelicor Arbalest. And look at that record, 71.4% win rate with five wins. Uh, this one matches wonderfully with General Sloan. And I think I need to uh, get this card more involved in more battles. Number 17, the Soul Strangler. Look at that win rate, five and one. Um, what you're gonna see a lot of times with the Death Splinter, I don't know, I tend to, um, based on the winning percentage you saw previously, I tend to play well with Death. And one thing I like to do is there's a couple strong range monsters, archery monsters in Death that have these low, um, health counts and so i think i do a pretty good job of protecting them allowing them to deliver some damage uh, which the soul strangler you can can do and here's the other archery monster from death that gets a uh, a lot of protection low health nice damage the weirding warrior and i love its shatter ability and you can see this is the first undefeated card that you're going to see in the top 25 i'll give you a hint there's one more and that one more is right here, the Khmer Princess. Um, you, saw, you saw I played 12 matches with Earth, and she made five of them. But clearly, I need to consider using her more. Uh, one of my favorite untamed cards, I've spent the money. You can see I've spent, at least the estimated value is $112. I think I've spent more than that, because um, I think the price has dropped. But she's a low mana uh, a magic monster that pairs well with Obsidian. And when you get her to the level where she can heal, uh, tank heal, very, very strong monster. Number 14, the Celestial Harpy. Another low mana life card. This is one that is in here more for quantity than quality. As you can see, I play her in a large number of my, um, my life matches. Uh, six wins, but only a 40% win rate. Again, surprises me. I think I really need to look at my strategies with the life splinter and how I'm playing them. Number 13, the Magi of Chaos. A lot of times I pair this one with Obsidian in Earth, but what I found by looking at the data is I play the Magi of Chaos across a number of splinters. And so you can see a slightly sub below uh, 500 record. Um, very strong card from the neutral unit. And because it's gold foil, I'm incentivized to use it more often. That being said, I'm surprised the Magi has a sub 500 winning percentage. Number 12, my favorite tank from the water unit, the Demon Shark. You can see uh, six wins in 11 matches, just above 500 winning percentage. And given that my overall winning percentage for water is well below 500, this indicates that I would be well served to use the Demon Shark as much as possible when playing with the water unit. Number 11, the Silent Shah V. Uh, just one of my personal favorite cards from the Death Splinter. Uh, great speed, can land that three melee attack, and now because it has gold foil at level six, I'm incentivized to use it more often. A 60% winning clip. Now let's get into the top 10. Uriel the Purifier, or as I'd like to call him, just Uriel. Uh, I've always had a hunch that, I'm, that Uriel wins a lot of matches. I'm not a big fan of the recharge and going every other monsters that only attack every other turn. Uriel's my one exception. A, because he has the self-heal 
and B, because he has so much armor and uh, health to absorb a lot of damage. But then C, when he does attack, that four melee with the multiplier from recharge is really, really strong. Number nine, same record as Uriel, is the Regal Periton. You can see I only had 12 Earth matches, but the Regal made eight of them. And I think I need to consider using the Regal a bit more often. Just a very strong, high-speed magic monster that pairs well with Obsidian. Number eight, the Unicorn Mustang. Look at that record, six and one. This thing pairs so well with the Regal in its ability to absorb magic, and it pairs well with another Earth card you're going to see at the top ten. As you can see, it's another untamed monster that I've paid to level up to, to four, to level four, and I'm probably going to continue to invest in this monster. It's one of my favorite untamed cards. Number seven, Uraeus. This one makes the top ten more for quantity than quality. A sub-500 record at 41.2%. The thing about Uraeus, because it's in the neutral splinter, you can use it quite a bit, and I do like its poison ability. I am just a bit surprised it isn't winning more matches. Number six, the first and the only dragon card to make the top 25, the Chaos Dragon. I uh, have this thing up to level two, so it has flying, scattershot, and blast, and that magic damage is something else. Seven wins, 70% win rate. Now we're getting into the top five cards. Number five is the other Earth card to make the match, to make the list. You can see out of 12 Earth battles, the Goblin Psychic made nine of them. And this is a card I love to pair with the Unicorn Mustang. The Unicorn Mustang has high health, has the ability to absorb magic. And when you have the Goblin Psychic coming in after the Unicorn has had its attack and taken a few hits, it can heal it up and let it keep going. I think the Goblin Psychic and the Unicorn Mustang is probably my favorite one-two punch in all of Splinterlands. Number four, the Deep Lurker. This is more of a quantity over quality. This might be my favorite card in the entire game. I'm personally surprised it only has a 500 winning percentage, but I think a lot of that is just a result of me kind of not playing as well with the Earth Splinter recently. I have a feeling uh, if my performance with Earth turns around, you're going to see the Deep Lurker's winning percentage increase accordingly. Number three, the Curse Windicu. <laughs> One of the most difficult tanks in the Death Splinter to go up against. The Self Heal and the Thorns combination make this guy one of the most difficult cards to go up against. Number two, the Corpse Fiend. Nine wins, six losses for a 60% win rate. This one is really more of a result of it being a proxy for the Death Splinter. Because I don't play many high mana battles with the Death Splinter, uh, a lot of times when I am using Death, it's in a low to mid mana count where I have other monsters eating up all the mana and the Corpse Fiend just finds a role. And a lot of times I will stick it at the anchor position in the end in order to protect the Soul Strangler and or the Weirding Warrior from taking damage from snipe ability. Now let's go to the number one card. I'm going to pause. Do you have any guesses what this number one card is going to be based on the 24 you've seen? What's the strongest card in your mind, in your perspective, that hasn't been shown yet? Go ahead and put your guess, pause the video and put your guess in the, in the uh, comments below. Okay, let's go to number one. The Supply Runner. A neutral card, 10 wins, 71.4% winning percentage. I use this guy a lot because he adds that speed component uh, to any group that he joins and because he's neutral he can play across all splinters this is a really strong card and i'm looking forward to leveling up to uh to uh, level eight all right that's everything for uh, this video i hope you enjoyed it and feel free to comment below with some of your favorite cards that you like to play with in splinterlands